everybody hello we have our microphone working here all right welcome back we're doing a little thursday edition of our live show um so thank you for tuning in everyone what's going on everyone on instagram what's going on everyone on youtube um really excited you're here today today's gonna be a good one we're actually gonna be talking about um adrenals thyroid what's the connection uh what's going on uh, you know, between them. And then we'll talk about, you know, some, uh, some solutions here with some of that, because what's the point of kind of going through this if there aren't any, you know, solutions here. Uh, now, before we go into this, I'm actually really excited. I'm just going to announce this quick. Um, what we're talking about here is I actually just launched because I get questions all the time. I'm like, where do I start? How do I get started? Um, you know, so what I did was I put together a, a 21 day transformation. Now this is going to include a lot of different stuff. Like we mentioned, talking about, uh, constipation, we started talking about, you know, how do you get into using some detox practices on your own, you know, safely and effectively. And this, I think three week approach is worth checking out. Um, there are some videos that I included kind of from my bigger detox course. Uh, but it's much more streamlined and just done for 21 days. There's a 21 day um, meal plan that's in there that's provided. So if you want to check that out, you can do that too. Um, and it's just a formula to to get the ball rolling, right? And I think for for nineteen dollars, it's like a an actual no brainer. Um, and honestly, for nineteen dollars, like, would you be opposed to you know trying something that could you know transform your health? And it's all laid out for you. Um, and just, you know, think of that, like, would you be opposed to trying something for $19 that can really, you know, transform your health? And if you think it could help, um, I hope that's a start. Uh, one more thing before getting into it is, um, I did do a poll, uh, yesterday, I think on Instagram and I was talking about, you know, maybe coming out with more courses or doing a library type thing, like a, um, uh, like a, a membership where I can put kind of all of these different protocols and uh, different things and we can do live Q and A's and, you know, really get together and, and, and create a community where we can, you know, heal and understand the, the nuances of this stuff, you know, more and do it in a way where we can all kind of do it together. Cause I'd love to connect with a lot of you on calls and, um, you know, provide some value here. Um, so, uh, take it, keep an eye out for that. I'm looking, you know, for ways to potentially add to it or what to include. Um, so if you guys have any input, you know, feel free to DM me because I want to make this, you know, as valuable as possible. I was thinking to start, you know, uh, weekly, maybe do one live call a week, do a couple Q and A's. I would do a separate lecture like this. That's more specific on treatments. And then maybe one time a month, we could have some fun and do like a cooking demo, a cooking class so, or like something like that. Um, and then obviously I would have other stuff. I would start building out the library for it and things like that. So if that all sounds good, I'd love to know, um, if you're interested in something like that, I'd love to know, I would still, am going to continue to do courses, but, um, you know, if we can build that too, that would be really cool. Okay. So cooking videos. All right. So maybe that will be part of it is maybe doing like one cooking demo a month. And I used to do them all the time. I used to live stream them. So um, we could start doing that again and do that in our little community. I think that would be something fun and unique. And I, I don't know many other doctors doing it. So um, that might be cool. And you get, you know, some really rich, you know, plant-based recipes and we could maybe do them together. I think it'll be fun. Okay. All right. So with that out of the way, let's get into kind of what we're talking about today. And that is going to be um, adrenals. So adrenals and thyroid. So these are two you know, really, really big ones. And really, I, I think it misconstrued, you know, a lot of the time here. And what I mean by that is this is, in my opinion, and, and just kind of like working, you know, in practice, I find that a lot of what we call adrenal problems are actually, or sorry, a lot of thyroid problems are actually adrenal problems, and they both go together. And that's ultimately kind of the issue that I'm going to try to explain, you know, in this chat today is I find most thyroid issues are actually just adrenal issues. And when you think about this, like low thyroid now, now when I see most of the folks that I work with tend to be female, 
Um, and there's usually like a, a series of events depending on, you know, when me and that person kind of come together. Right. Um, and usually, again, you know, usually if it's someone like really getting into this for the first time, they might be on, you know, something like birth control. Um, now, why is birth control, you know, important here it is because birth control is essentially, you know, it, it's it's a hormone disruptor, especially usually en uh, estrogens. And when we think of endocrine disruptors, a, a, a useful alternative might to be to think of estrogen disruptors, because most xenoestrogens, most endocrine disrupting chemicals usually take the form of estrogen in one way or another and, and, and mess hormones up that way. How does this play a role? So think about this is, you know, you get diagnosed with low thyroid. Why? Because when estrogen's high, adrenal, we have to use cortisol. What, and what is cortisol? Cortisol is our major, major, major anti-inflammatory hormone in the body. Yes, it, it's for energy to get blood rushing if we need to, you know, run away from something. But what cortisol is really useful for is it's actually the most powerful anti-inflammatory we have in the body. So if there is a buildup, for example, of estrogen, we that could lead to potentially tissue inflammation. And when you get to tissue inflammation, then you're going to get to a place where we're going to have cortisol released. We have excess cortisol. This is going to lead to an issue where now the liver has to detoxify not only the excess estrogen, but also metabolize this excess cortisol. And it leads to an issue. What happens is you end up with something like gallstones, when you go through gallstones, you realize cholesterol, cortisol, like are, are actually part of the stones themselves. But maybe at age 35, you know, you end up getting your gallbladder removed. And then and then now you're having issues with fat metabolism, essentially going forward, then what happens after that now we're talking about, but these issues don't go away, right? So now down down the road, now we're talking PCOS or fibroids. Uh, and and Instead of just addressing the root cause in the in, in the beginning, which was actually just addressing the hormones, now we're leading to this cascade effect where, you know, the liver is involved, the adrenals are involved, and obviously the thyroid's involved. And all of it could have been avoided if you just checked and worked with, you know, kind of what's going on at the at the root and then really getting to the bottom of it. So what I find is that adrenals, thyroid are intimately related. When I see low thyroid function, I'm usually thinking high adrenals because they can't both be active at the same time. So adrenals, a good way to think about it is this. Adrenals are high when you're under, under a period of stress, right? That's when our adrenals really get active. They're going to produce cortisol. They're going to produce glucocorticosteroids, mineral corticosteroids, things like cortisol, to keep us active, to shunt blood away from digestion, away from repair, to the muscles, to the nervous system, so we can get out of whatever situation we're in at the moment. Thyroid is dominant when we're in that chilled, rest and relax situation. It's essentially defines and controls our metabolism. And one way to look at it is the adrenal glands are responsible for that in, in areas of stress, when you're in fight or flight mode. And the other the, the thyroid is kind of the dominant one when we're in rest and digest, relax, parasympathetic mode. So that's usually like a good way, I think, to break it down. And like when you look in the conventional community here, there's like this circular logic here. And, and we and we need to talk about hormones and how they work, because if, if you don't understand like the physiology of it, then you're going to be running around in circles. And this is honestly why. A lot of like what is done with uh, thyroid tests it is not only inaccurate, but if you don't even get all of the tests, then it's really hard to get a feel for what's going on. So like if, if you look at the conventional model, you'll say hypothyroidism, low thyroid, is when the thyroid glands fail to produce enough hormones. Um, and it could be due to a number of factors, including like an autoimmune disease. Um, and the two most common causes are an autoimmune disorder known as Hashimoto's, right? Now, Hashimoto's is inflammation of the thyroid gland. So this means that it is caused by something going on with the immune system. There's inflammation. There's something inflammatory that is going to deal with the 
a immune system that's going to affect the thyroid gland. And so, so now, so think about this, like hypothyroidism, the most common cause is Hashimoto's. Hashimoto's is hypothyroiditis, low thyroid. We don't know what happens. We just know it's an immune response. What we do know, though, is what happens when immune uh, when the immune system is active. There's a physical, chemical, emotional stress. One of those those is going on that's causing inflammation uh, to to rise right in the body. And why does inflammation happen? There's tissue damage. There's overgrowths of fungi, bacteria, yeast, viruses, parasites, etc. Something that is that is causing damage to the body tissue. Again, it could be physical, chemical, or emotional. And when inflammation rises, we have cortisol going. And when cortisol is up, thyroid production is going to go down. So is it really the autoimmune disease or is it a, a high inflammatory state causing adrenals to be kicked into overdrive, which again, you they're a balance. So if, if the adrenals are kicking, the thyroid is going to be down most likely. That to me is almost always actually is what is happening. Now, can you have thyroid toxicity? Sure you can, especially if there's heavy metals involved and um, you know, other other radioactive poisons that that are going to deal issues directly to the thyroid gland. But that is much rarer than the common stress state that we are in. And this is why balancing the nervous system is so important, especially in the beginning. And even when you look at a test, so this is really important. So if you look at your lab work and you're looking at your TSH, right? So TSH isn't actually a thyroid hormone. It's not made in the thyroid gland. It's made in your brain. It's a nervous system thing. And this is why the, the HPA axis is so important to understand, the hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis, because the pituitary is responsible for creating the thyroid stimulating hormone, TSH. That is in the brain. Now, the hypothalamus is important because the hypothalamus is essentially the switchboard between your nervous system and your, your, your hormones, your endocrine system. It has essentially one foot on each side, and it's the controller between the two. So if you have that, then that is going to actually control what's going on with the thyroid. Now, the thyroid, it's a, it's a small kind of lot, like two-lobed uh, gland in the neck. Um, and you know, it has an anterior portion. It has a posterior portion. There's a parathyroid, which is responsible for calcium, um, metabolism in the body. So you have, that will have, uh, the parathyroid will have calcitonin, which brings down calcium levels, uh, and then parathyroid hormone, which is going to bring up calcium levels. And then you have your thyroid hormones, which are produced by the thyroid gland, which are T3 and T4. Now the T is essentially for thyroid. T3 is three iodines. T4 is four iodines that are attached to the thyroid hormone. And the T3 is generally the active form. Now, the thyroid, again, especially when we're in that uh, normal parasympathetic rest and digest state, is going to be responsible for, uh, for increasing and decreasing things like metabolism, how glucose is utilized through cells. And remember, humans, primates, um, you know, we run on glucose. That is the mechanism for energy in the body. Um, it's responsible for protein metabolism and amino acids. So how those amino acids are recombined, uh, how fats are metabolized and used, how strong and how fast our heartbeat is, our respiratory rate and depth, uh, calcium absorption. Obviously, we talked about that. So the thyroid parathyroid is kind of like the gas pedal of the body. That's how I like to explain it. That's generally a good way to look at it is if you're pushing it down, we're going to run into a faster rate. And if we take our foot off the gas, it's going to slow things down a little bit. So I hope that makes sense. So we have, again, TSH, which is the pituitary, which goes, which is going to stimulate the thyroid to make more thyroid hormones. And all our glands essentially work on negative feedback loops. So that if we have low circulating thyroid hormones, that's going to stimulate, again, back to the brain, hey, we don't need more, let's slow it down. The pituitary is going to stop producing TSH, and then we have a slower release of thyroid hormones. That, that's essentially how all our hormone systems work. They're negative feedback loops. Now, when these loops are 
disrupted for some reason or something's out of balance. You have to realize the body's really smart. It's doing these things for a reason. So when something is going on, we have to ask ourselves, why? What is going on? What is potentially causing that? And that's where we get into it. This is where the immune system is so important. Now, like, it's really important because if you take a step back and think about it, we actually all have cancer cells in our body every day at every given, any given time. And our body has the, the ability to regulate that at, at, at a very high level. When that gets out of whack, it is a response to something. You have to realize we have gotten to a point now where one of ev- one out of every two people is potentially going to get cancer. Um, and we now live in a space where, you know, 50%, over 50% of kids of this generation is going to have a um, a chronic illness that they will likely not recover from. And that's for a variety of reasons we can't necessarily cover here, but maybe we will talk about in the library and the membership. Um, but, you know, like we have to start asking ourselves these questions as to why and what this is going, like what is going on here. So, so what is going on here? Like with stress, when you have a physical, chemical, or emotional stress, that is going to raise your sympathetic nervous system. This is your fight or flight. And what goes up during this? Heart rate, blood pressure, especially out to the limbs, to the brain. Uh, blood sugar is going to rise because we have to get uh, glucose um, out of cells to our muscles so they can provide energy for our, our muscles to work. Um, LDL cholesterol is going to rise. Why? Because L, the low density uh, lipoproteins are going to carry cholesterol to because cholesterol is incredibly anti-inflammatory. LDL is responsible for bringing it, delivering it to tissues. And then cortisol and all stress hormones are going to go up. Now, what also happens when um, when we're in, when a stress, a physical, chemical, emotional stress happens, certain things get shut down. Uh, gut, gut, uh, blood supply to the gut goes down. Immune system response goes down. Uh, we do not repair as well when we are in a stress state, so it takes longer to heal. Uh, TSH is, is decreased because, again, we're in a situation where we need to get out of an environment so we can survive and live to the next day. And what does this do? That leads to low thyroid function. So again, when adrenals are high, thyroid's going to be low. Really important to understand here with that, because if we're not at that point, it's going to be a big issue. And this is why you'll see, um, you know, there's a classic representation is you'll see folks who have kind of like skinny arms or skinny legs, but a really round uh, midsection. That's usually the distribution of, of, of stress of where the weight bearing goes is, is around the, the, the abdomen. And, w- and what's happening is all this glucose is being shunted to muscles to, to, to essentially flee, right? But if there's actually no actual fear, then all that stuff needs to be stored somewhere. It ends up being stored in fat cells, and it's usually around the abdomen. So you'll get a presentation with skinny arms, skinny legs, and a round belly, like a pot belly. And that's what happens when, again, cortisol is always high, TSH is always low, you have low thyroid, which is also the same thing as high adrenals. We're starting to see like how this comes together here and how it's how it's important to understand when our adrenals, when we're in kicking in that high stress state, that's going to shut off thyroid function. So that's really important. Um, And again, they all work on negative uh, feedback loops right? But it only gets shut down when it gets the signal for it. And that's really, really important to understand. So if we're not even producing the TSH because cortisol is shutting off that feedback loop, that's when you're going to get, now you're going to have low thyroid function. You're going to be told you have Hashimoto's. You're going to be told you have an autoimmune disease. You're going to be told, uh, you know, to take some you know, thyroid hormone or something like that, but that actually doesn't fix the problem. That is just a bandaid instead of taking a step back and being like, Oh, Hey, there's actually this physical, chemical, emotional stressor that's causing you to shut your thyroid down. And you're in this sympathetic dominant state all the time. That is where we kind of have to get to with this is because if we're not understanding that this is coming from 
the brain. This is coming from a signal from the brain that you're in a stress state, the hypothalamus. It releases something known as corticotrophin releasing hormone, which goes to the pituitary. The pituitary is going to release TSH. And then that's where you get, again, your thyroid uh, hormone. So that is ultimately what's happening. And the master controller behind it is the nervous system. This is why it's so important that like, you know, I understand, you know, my background is as a chiropractor and this stuff's important, but what you realize is this is what we mean a lot of the times when, you know, your nervous system's out of balance. It's the sympathetic driving dominant state all the time. And if we're not actually checking that, it's going to be an issue. Now, again, I've mentioned this could come from a physical, chemical, or emotional stress. So think about it. If you're walking around with a forward head carriage like this or off to the side, or you have a shrug, uh, shrugged up shoulder, all the nerves in the central nervous system have to come out somewhere. So if I'm walking around like this, is that going to affect the nervous, nervous and blood supply to those areas, especially in the neck and upper chest? Yes, it is. And what controls the heart? What controls the thyroid? You know, the sympathetic is going to be in the top of the thoracic spine, the parasympathetics up in the neck. So if that's not going to start, like if you're not going to address the physical, that's one thing we need to look at. Another thing we need to look at is this idea of thyroid replacement hormones here. So we know the thyroid gland is going to normally produce T3. And again, that's your thyroid hormone with three iodines attached to it. Um, now, what, but what happened is like thyroxine itself like can often act as a thyroid anti-hormone. So thyroxine is often used in hypothyroid cases. Um, but what happens is, you know, if you're, it, it's going to shut down the production. So it's going to, so you're taking something to essentially band-aid a problem. But what that is going to tell the brain is, oh, hey, all right, we don't need more. We're not going to produce it. Now the thyroid's going to start to atrophy and going to have issues because we're not naturally actually producing it like we should. And that's a major, major issue, especially when you're trying to get function back of the thyroid gland here. Now, most of the thyroid hormone that we have just floating around in our blood, we have T4, like 20 times more T4 to T3. Um, and T3 is what we call the active thyroid, uh, the active form of the thyroid hormone. It's T3. And where T4 gets converted to T3, some of it happens in the thyroid, but it largely happens in the liver, the gut, the kidneys, and the lungs. Um, so now this has opened up something completely different because if we're having trouble with liver detoxification, if we're not having bowel movements at least two to three times a day, if the kidneys are shut down and not circulating toxins like they should, if we're mouth breathing all the time and we're not getting optimal amounts of oxygen on a daily basis, oh, wow, this is going to affect how T4 is converted to T3. And then not only that, it's going to be how it is affecting everything else downstream. And this is why I talk so much about the, he the health of the bowel. This is why I talk so much about it in iridology because that is essentially the key of how the gut affects all the different organs, all the different glands. And if that is backed up, if that's not functioning properly, if your detox and drainage pathways are not open and functioning as they should be, we're going to run into some real issues, um, which is, again, why I released the detox course. This is why I work with people on this. And if you're interested and you're not opposed to, you know, really taking charge of your health, shoot me a DM. Like I, we can schedule something to talk about this. Um, all of that information is there so that we can clean these up so that we can get the conversion of these hormones that we meet. Now, what can cause hypothyroid? Again, adrenal stress is a big one. Nutrient deficiencies is a big one. Heavy metal exposure um, and oxidized, uh, you know, rancid fatty acids. Uh, so things like, again, why, uh, processed foods are so bad, why vegetable oils like soy and vegetable, uh, safflower, sunflower, canola oil. These are all going to increase the oxidative damage, oxidative stress in the body, put a strain on the liver, use up the antioxidant stores that could potentially lead to a nutrient deficiency, similar to heavy metal exposure, similar to adrenal stress, 
And now again, we're in a system where, hey, you have low thyroid, just take a drug for it. And and this is why, you know, we need to understand that like there's a difference between the two. And the adrenals are so important, like so important. And I know they're just two small glands that are right essentially on top of your kidneys. They're really in the back, but in the kidneys. They're essentially the pharmacy of the body. I forget who was talking about this and told me about it, but the adrenals are essentially your body's pharmacy. They create every glucocorticosteroid, every mineral corticosteroid, and every sex hormone in your body. They're all, all created by the adrenal glands. These include things like estrogen and testosterone, which need to be balanced by progesterone. They, again, are, and all of these, by the way, the mineral corticosteroids, uh, the glucocorticosteroids, the sex hormones are all derived from cholesterol. And most of the cholesterol in our body, by the way, is not dietary. The liver creates 80 to 90% of it. So, you know, is, if, if our liver is not functioning properly and not producing enough cholesterol, are we going to have issues with sex hormones, maybe low or high? Are we going to have issues with cortisol? Yeah, absolutely. Are we going to have issues with thyroid function? Absolutely. So I hope you're starting to see like how this stuff starts to fit together here. Um, and, you know, cortisol is great, again, because it is the main anti-inflammatory um, substance in the body is cortisol. It, it's anti-inflammatory, antioxidant properties. So when you're having things like uh, conventional foods, environmental stressors like heavy metals from uh, everything from amalgam fillings to um, you know, injections to anything else, other physical stressors, uh, drugs and alcohol, caffeine, all of this is going to affect the adrenals. It's really, really big. Progesterone's really big. Um, you know, cause progesterone is going to be the balance between testosterone and men, estrogen and women. Progesterone is essentially your balancing hormone. And if, you know, it also has, uh, anti-cancer effects, it helps prevent, um, infections. Um, we know healthy progesterone levels are associated with a less incidence of autoimmune issues. So, you know, really, really big. I mean, this is why, you know, the adrenals is so important. And this is also why I believe that, you know, what we call hypothyroidism is almost always an adrenal issue first and foremost. And again, like what's so, so like, why do I think this again? On one side of the scale, we have the cortisol and one side we have thyroid hormones. And on the cortisol side, what's going on? It's what what's going to raise cortisol? Well, it, A, if it's high, thyroid function is going to be low. Inflammation is going to raise cortisol because cortisol is an anti-inflammatory. Stress is going to raise it, physical, chemical, or emotional, any kind. Um, injections can obviously do it because that's going to induce a inflammatory response in the body inflammation. So you do that, you put a heavy metal, something like mercury, um, you know, anytime you're going to take something like a flu shot that has aluminum, that's going to do it. So, you know, if there's tissue damage, that's going to do it. Uh, toxic foods, um, you know, again, endocrine disruptors, they're essentially estrogen lined foods, things like glyphosate going to be an issue. Conventional fruits and vegetables going to be an issue, uh, going to be an issue, not as much though as the conventional um, animal products, especially why? Because those actually have antibiotics in them as well. Not also though, higher levels of things like epinephrine, norepinephrine, and adrenaline, because these and these animals are in a stress state before they're killed. That's just what it is. Um, what, what's going to lower cortisol levels? Balancing your thyroid, a healthy you know, getting more fruits and vegetables, more iodine rich foods, seaweeds are going to be big for this, making sure you're not drinking chlorinated water. And this is another big thing that I want to get into. So, you know, we have iodine, which is really important for uh, thyroid function, right? We have three iodines on T3, we have four iodines on T4. Now, if you look, if you Google a uh, periodic table, your table of elements, right? That Iodine is going to be in the, the second to the right column. They're called the halogens. 
And you'll notice in that column, you're going to have chlorine, you're going to have fluorine, you're going to have iodine, you're going to have bromine. And what you'll notice is brominated flowers are in a lot of conventional flowers. We have chlorine um, in, in the water. In, in, if you're drinking, you know, tap water all the time, there's going to be chlorine in that. There's going to be fluoride in that and in your conventional toothpaste. All of these things actually compete with iodine for those same receptor spots. So if we're constantly ingesting these toxins, they can actually crowd out the receptor spots for iodine. So you might actually be getting enough iodine, but if you're constantly adding these poisons on a regular basis, using fluoridated toothpaste, drinking regular tap water, the, the processed foods, you're going to have the bromine, the chlorine, the fluorine that's going to displace where iodine is actually supposed to be because they all compete for that same receptor site. So it might not actually be low thyroid function. It could just be outright replaced by these other halogens. So it's important to keep that in mind too. Um, the thyroid itself. So what, what's going to help the thyroid? Making sure we're maintaining a healthy gut. This is why, again, the 21-day transformation, if you want to try that, um, you can start it whenever. There's It basically starts when you want to start, and it'll take you through three weeks. Um, you know, cortisol, what uh, it, you know, getting the gut right is the beginning. And again, I share my iridology charts. If you go back, check my post today. Um, you know, you can see how the gut is related to the thyroid gland on a regular basis. And this is why I check this stuff on people all the time. Um, you know, lowering cortisol. So are we dealing with whatever that physical, chemical, emotional stress is not drinking fluoridated water, you know, Getting organic, ideally fruits and vegetables for the most part, um, really going to be helpful. What's going to lower thyroid? Again, fluoride, chlorine, things like that, higher estrogens. So it, things like birth control, huge, huge issue, especially when it comes to thyroid. Um, liver toxicity. Again, the liver's got to cycle through all this stuff. And it's also important for the conversion of T4 to T3. Pesticides, those are endocrine disruptors. They're going to mess with your estrogen levels. When you think of endocrine disruptors, they largely affect estrogen in men and women. Uh, you know, high stress, more toxic foods, medications, injections, all of these are going to affect this balance. Now, and it's estimated, you know, as now, like over 60 million Americans, most of which are women, play, are uh, have some issue with the thyroid. And what I'm just trying to say is like most of these things that are labeled thyroid problems are not actually thyroid problems. They are adrenal issues at the end of the day. They're, they're adrenal issues. And again, cortisol is great. You know, in short term, it'll save your life. It raises your blood sugar levels um, when you need it to get it to the muscles you need and to the brain when you need it. It's going to alter immune responses so that more energy can be put towards um, you know, saving your life, whether you have to run away, it changes the tone and blood pressure. Um, it changes your heart function. It also changes the, the function of the central nervous system. But when it's there for a long period of time and you're always in this fight or flight state, it leads to issues with the thyroid. It's going to affect your cognitive performance. It's going to affect your blood sugar and decrease your bone density. Why? Because that's going to affect your acid alkaline balance in the body where are most of your minerals, your your ions, your alkaline electrolytes stored? In the bone. So if you're continuing to go to the bone bank to alkalize the blood and we're not getting it from the foods, going to lead to osteoporosis. Big issues. A lot of acidic drugs like sulfa drugs also make the blood more acidic, more coagulant. So it's going to have thick acidic blood. Not what you're looking for when you're trying to heal or... If you're trying to get to an ideal spot where you're trying to optimize thyroid function, it's going to affect your sleep. It's going to decrease your muscle mass and also increase the abdominal fat. We talked about that. It's also going to affect and impair your immune system and lymphatic system because that's where the majority of your immune system is. It's in the lymphatic system and more specifically, it's around that gut lining in that lymph tissue and it's going to slow uh, wound healing. So. You know, all of these things that we see like MS or early aging or diabetes or uh, autoimmune diseases like Hashimoto's, it's a long, it's a high cortisol for a long-term type of thing. 
That's really what's going on here. Um, and again, when you're doing things like eating conventional foods that are laced with antibiotics all the time, you wonder why, you know, we have a third of kids who are diabetic ki kids. Why, why the rate of kids being, uh, you know, labeled with things like anxiety and depression higher than ever, asthma higher than ever. It's because constantly consuming foods that are laced with antibiotics that are injected that are going to affect the immune system. All of these things are going to, to lead to inflammation, which is going to lead to increased cortisol and therefore lower thyroid function. So it's really not surprising that it's happening, but what we're doing is using drugs to raise thyroid hormone and we're not actually addressing what's really going on. And if we're not at a point now where this stuff starts to change, we're going into a place where it's going to be really, really tough for it to, you know, really make an issue. So again, these halogens like chlorine, fluorine, and bromine can affect or, or inhibit, I should say, iodine's ability to attach to, to its receptors. Uh, leaky gut. Again, we talked about this. GMOs, uh, different types of heavy metals, poisons, neurotoxins, antibiotics from either the food or actually taking antibiotics, going to be an issue. And you wonder why and leaky gut is associated with literally every autoimmune disease that I have not seen in, in any type of autoimmune type issue, which includes Hashimoto's, which is the main cause of low thyroid, has not had some gut component. And again, this is why iridology is so important. It's a tool that, that bridges the gap, in my opinion. And it's something that's absolutely invaluable when it comes to this. So really important there. Uh, you know, excess estrogens, we talked about this, um, you know, from the food supply. Um, if you're having conventional soy that's sprayed with glyphosate or conventional wheat that's sprayed with glyphosate or conventional anim animal products that consume the, the conventional soy and corn, so they end up with it. Uh, you know, the hormones and meats really, really negatively going to impact you. We know the excess estrogens are associated with poorer liver function, fibroids, endometriosis, uh, mood swings, uh, lower thyroid function. Uh, and again, cosmetics, birth controls, um, you know, using plastics all the time or, or um, uh, cookware that's, that, that's lined, uh, nonstick cookware, water bottles, again, hormones and meats, all of these are estrogenic. They're going to cause issues. And progesterone it, it is essentially what we need to balance that stuff out. So when the estrogens or testosterone in men are way too high, progesterone is needed to balance that out. Um, and we really need that. So, and cholesterol, this is why cholesterol is really important too, is converted to something known as pregnenolone and progesterone. So, you know, in the, in the adrenals. So we need that cholesterol precursor. And again, if we have liver damage or if we're taking in too many toxins and the liver is not able to do the job it can, going to be a big issue. So you see how the liver is really kind of important here. Um, and this is also why.